Hey, Tapsters, if you haven't heard, the Travel Agent Podcast is going on tour. Yes, we are. And if you would like to learn more about that, go to the Travel Agent Podcast.com backslash resources. Now, this month is the anniversary of the podcast, and we are celebrating all month long. And this month, we are going to be talking to lots of different travel professionals who have niched all the way down because I truly believe the riches are in the niches. And for some, it is so difficult to be able to take the leap and really just become an expert in one thing because we want to do everything. The world is such a beautiful, amazing place. We just want to help people go everywhere. But as travel professionals, especially um, as we kind of move into the next phase out of COVID, I, I truly believe that listening to a lot of these different travel professionals and how well their business is doing because they made a decision to specifically talk about one place or one thing. I think that you might be inspired to do the same. So let's keep the party going. And don't forget that we are having a giveaway and we are giving away items from the swag shop. So I got to do is click the link down below Go to the Instagram or Facebook and make sure that you put your name in because every single Friday at noon, we are drawing names to give away things. Here's the next episode. Welcome to the Travel Agent Podcast. I'm your host, Aileen Blanco. I interview successful industry professionals and share my personal journey to becoming a travel agent. The show is for aspiring travel agents and travel professionals at every level. My mission is to uncover the universal keys to thrive in this business. Join me as I take a closer look into the life of a travel agent. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Travel Agent Podcast. Today we have another fabulous guest and I am going to let her introduce herself. Hi everyone. So my name is Karen and I'm the founder of Spain Less Travel. We are a travel service specializing in personalized travel services to Spain, such as bespoke and handcrafted itineraries, as well as travel consulting. And I am located in Andalusia in the south of Spain. Wonderful. So again, audience, listen. (laughs) Listen, Tapsters, we always get started by asking the same question. How did you get started? Yeah, what a fun question, Um, because I think that there's kind of two facets to this question. First of all, how I got started in the travel industry, and then what led me here to Spain. So in a nutshell, how I got started in the travel industry is I knew I always wanted to work in this industry. Um, When I was a teenager, my parents tasked me with planning our first family vacation to Europe. This was before the days of the internet. So I was you know, flipping through the Sunday paper, the travel section and calling up travel agents and basically piecing it all together. And that trip, well, we went to Spain and France. We'll get to that in a second. But um, that trip kind of really solidified that, yeah, I wanna work in this industry. So when I graduated from university, I took my first job in the industry. I started working for STA Travel which at the time was the largest student travel organization in the world. It was a great ride. I loved that job. I learned so much. I learned the ins and outs of the travel industry. I became fluent in Sabre um, and then later Amadeus. And I really just knew how to sell travel and how to, and how to talk about travel and explain travel. I also got to travel the world um, with that job for fairly cheap, which is great because anybody in this industry knows there's no money in the industry. So in fact, when I took the job, my parents told me it was highway robbery, what they were going to pay me. But anyways, I made it work for, um, oh gosh, I think it was seven years. Yeah, until uh, STA Travel in 2008 went out of business in the United States mostly. They closed, I believe it was 48 out of 60 shops. And my job, um, my office in Berkeley, California in the Bay Area was, was one of those. And I was devastated because I love that job. And by then some of my closest friends were at that job with me. In fact, to this day, we're all like, the three of us are still best friends, but um, I didn't, you know, I I, I did a lot of soul searching and 
and, and worked for various mom and pop travel agencies, but I wasn't really quite finding my way. Um, I ended up just, you know, thinking, all right, how, how, how am I going to make this all work? So then um, right before I was traveling myself to Central America, when I was still living in San Francisco, I heard about this little company called Airbnb. Nobody had heard of them. The booking clap platform at that point was like so jankety, it wasn't even funny. But I ended up booking Airbnbs all over Costa Rica and Panama. And it worked out really well. I enjoyed staying at like little family run guest houses and in people's houses and really getting to talk with the locals, practice my Spanish. It was, it was super fun. Um, I got back and was still kind of like, all right, I need to, I need to break, I need to get into a job in this industry that I really enjoy. So a few months later, I found out that Airbnb was hiring and not only were they hiring, but they were hiring for people to work remotely. This was in 2011. So I applied for the job thinking, all right, it can't hurt. We'll see what happens. Again, my parents thought it was a scam. They were like, what is going on here? A job where you can work from home, where you make reservations, helping people stay on someone's couch. That makes no sense. <laughs> so um, long story short, I did get offered the job at Airbnb. And in 2011, I joined the company because they were so small at that time, they didn't have room for me in the office. So I was a remote worker. I was really one of the original digital nomads. Um, back in the day, that term wasn't even calling. Nobody had heard of it. It was, it was odd. But um, I started traveling around the world again, working for Airbnb while I was doing it, getting the job done, making it happen, watching this little baby travel company grow into this household name that it is today. And then it was, it, was, um, it was a hard job. Anybody who works in tech knows that, especially travel tech. And I worked with such wonderful, smart people. I loved my team. Everything was going great um, until the company basically told me that I, I could work from home, but I couldn't necessarily work from anywhere in the world. So that was kind of when I decided, okay, well, I'm really enjoying this life and this lifestyle. Um, how can I how can I leave this company and, and do it on my own? So the pieces fell into place. I planned out a really strategic exit strategy and ended up leaving Airbnb in 2017 on my own will um, on, really, on a really high note too. And by then I was already very entrenched in Spain. Um, I'll get to that in a moment. So ultimately I decided that I was going to move to Spain and start my own travel company. And yeah, and then in terms of how I, how I fell in love with Spain, well, of course, that first trip that I took when I was a teenager, first time outside of North America, how could you not love Europe? I mean, for real. Um, but really what sold it to me was um, when I went back as an adult, was working for Airbnb at the time and decided that I was gonna book a ticket to Barcelona and um, see what happens. And, and so what happened was um, I flew into Barcelona and then I planned the trip in advance, but I ended up spending just two or three days in Barcelona. And then I went out to Andalusia here in the South of Spain. And I fell so in love with Granada. It stole my heart. Andalusia stole my heart. So then from there on, I started spending three months in the South of Spain and then three months out of the European Union, three months in the South, three months outside. So when I left Airbnb, um, I, I traveled for a bit, I did some soul searching, I applied for a visa and I moved to Spain. Originally I moved to Madrid because it's the capital and I thought that that was gonna be a great, I, I knew that that was gonna be a great city to start my business and to network and it's right in the middle of Spain. So it's so accessible to other regions. Madrid itself is such an underrated European capital. It is an awesome, awesome city, but um, I always knew in my heart that I was going to end up in the South because that was what led me here. I just kind of needed to establish some roots. So um, I sped that up just a little bit. I had planned about five years in Madrid, but because of the pandemic, I ended up moving down here to the South of Spain, to Andalusia, to the city of Malaga in October of, of last year, October of 2020. Have loved the life here, love living in Andalusia. It's my favorite region in the world. Um, love the culture, the art, the architecture, the language, love selling it to my clients and talking it up to my clients. And I love that it's coastal. I have mountains and I have sea. So it also very much reminds me what I loved about California. And oh, the weather is usually great. <laughs> so 
so that's kind of my story on how I ended up in the industry and ultimately started my own travel company focused around beautiful Spain. That is awesome. And I, I love how you, I think that people underrate their stories, you know what I mean? Because the story of the trials and the tribulations and, and the excitement and love for what you're doing is what brings you to the point of being an entrepreneur. So I absolutely love that story so much. So tell me a little bit more about, um, you talked about a strategic plan because I, I find that lots of travel agents and advisors, especially now, you know, are, are part-time or are working their business to become full-time. And you had a strategic plan to go from your, you know, your nine to five to your business. Do you mind giving us a little bit of insight to how you were able to kind of make that happen? Not at all. Um, So from my STA travel days, I still had a lot of contacts in the industry. I still knew a lot of people, both on the professional side and on the client side. So I had kind of that going for me, plus my travel industry experience as well. By then it had been, you know, like we were in the teens in terms of my my years of experience in the industry. Um, And then also, well, I mean, I think we all know that Airbnb IPO'd. So I just kind of waited until a day when... I could leave still getting kind of a piece of that pie, if that makes sense, and planning ahead. Um, And I put my finances in order, more or less. I kind of, um, you know, I did the math and also realized it was going to be a lot less expensive, a lot least, a lot less expensive, yeah, a lot less expensive to uh, be based in Spain than in San Francisco, California, which is, I think, the most expensive city in the United States. So I really played around with it and finagled it and made it happen. And then I just had some other life circumstances that that really pushed it that it was a that it was a possibility. So, um, yeah, I mean, it was scary. I was terrified leaving a fairly cushy. I mean, I don't like the word cushy because I worked really hard at Airbnb. I work really hard in my own business too, of course. But I really did, I, and I learned so much at Airbnb, and I loved it. But leaving like a well-paying job at, a, at, a, at that time Airbnb was a very established company it was it's a prestigious thing to have on your resume um so just leaving that to like completely you know jump and take the leap on my own and in a foreign country it was terrifying I'm not gonna lie and you know unfortunately the pandemic too has kind of pushed everything about 20 steps back but I'm confident I'm hopeful for how things are going to be once travel safely opens up again <laughs> Awesome. You said something that um, is near and dear to my heart, and it was that you still had lots of connections and, um, you know, friends and colleagues in the, in the industry. And one of the things that I absolutely continue to push is networking and building real relationships, because when you build real relationships, it really doesn't matter where you are in your in your journey. There's always someone to either mentor you or uh, give you someone who can. And so um, tell me a little bit how you have been able to build those relationships. And, and sustain those relationships that you've built over the years? So um, basically everyone that I worked with at STA Travel is still in travel in some shape or form, which is great. Um, in fact, the travel agency that I umbrella under is owned by former STA folks. So it's like a little family and it's wonderful. Um, yeah, so I had all of those connections working for various travel companies all over the world. Some still agents, um, you know, for example, at American Express or some working for companies such as G Adventures. Um, but we were, you know, we were, we're all in, in that industry together. Um, so there was that. And then in terms of my clients, you know, Facebook came out oh, about the time that I was still working at STA and everybody was adding everyone as Facebook friends. And I loved my clients. They loved me. By, by, the, time ST, by the time STA kind of crumbled, I had a really strong client base of people who trusted me and who I loved working with. So we kind of all remained friends over the years. And, you know, those student travelers at the time are now looking for a little bit more luxury. So I've done um, outside of Spain, I've done some five-star Africa for them, for example. And then, you know, word of mouth. Now, of course, there's also a clubhouse, which has been a great tool for travel agents, I would say, to network and and learn and meet one another. Um, yeah, and then here in Spain, um, before the pandemic, I did, um, I would go to a lot of networking events for um, both, internationals and more local. I would do most of my networking in English, but I'm getting to the point now where I'm comfortable to do it in Spanish as well. So yeah, um, there's also that. 
and just building connections with, with other travel providers here. And that's really my goal right now, because I, for what I do, I need a big network of local travel providers since I push the local, local experiences. So yeah, luckily, um, I also created a community online on Facebook. It's called Travel Spain. And while it's mostly travelers who are interested in visiting Spain a little bit more off the beaten path, of course, there's also a lot of people in there who live in Spain, are Spanish, who offer really unique travel experiences themselves. So I have a little Rolodex of all of them now, too, and have managed to build a really nice network of other people who are doing really localized and experiential travel here in Spain. So one of the reasons why I was excited to have you on the show is because I um, am trying to highlight the travel agents and advisors who dig really deep and go really niche because I truly feel like when you become an expert at something and you only do one thing, then you are the go-to person for that one thing. And so I absolutely love that you, you went all in and that you are actually living in the space that, that you sell and that you are doing things for, for the locals and with the locals so that you can provide um, a very different experience and most people will get using, you know, someone else. So kudos to you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, it's, it's very niche, definitely. Um, and, and during the pandemic, that, that was an issue because as we all know, the European Union has been pretty much closed. So it's not like I'm selling five-star Maldives right now. Um, I have some, I, I still do a little bit of Africa, but all of that is on hold too because of the pandemic. So yeah, but it's very niche. And um, I mean, I love it. I love the country. I love, I love selling it. I love talking about it. I love inspiring people to come here. And I love showing people a really authentic side to, to Spain. My clients are interested in the culture, the history, the art, the architecture, the gastronomy. You know, they're not necessarily wanting to, nor am I wanting to like dabble in all-inclusive resorts on Costa del Sol. Like my clients are really trying to have an immersive travel experience here in Spain. And I love it because that's what I'm all about. <laughs> so tell me, um, I always like to know what is something that you're really excited about that's coming up um, personally and professionally? Personally, let's start there. So um, I think that by now the world probably knows, but um, in Europe, we've had very, very hard lockdowns for the past uh, 16 months, more or less since last March. So um, since this past October, I have not been able to leave my province, not just like the region of Andalusia, but my actual province. So um, last week they announced that we can leave our provinces. So next week I'm going to the city of Cordoba to go to my favorite festival, which is gonna happen in a really modified version in all of Spain. And I'm just so thankful that I'm a local in Andalusia and that I can go because if I were still living in Madrid, it still wouldn't be legal for me to go. But i um, really excited about that because I really, I haven't traveled at all. It, I, I, I did a little bit of domestic travel here in Spain over the last summer, but everything's been shut. So it's been, it's been rough. So I'm really excited. I hope I remember how to pack my bag, um, but I can't wait. It's about an hour on the high speed train from where I live. So it's just a, a short journey, but I'll get to go to my favorite fiesta in all of Spain, which is called uh, La Fiesta de los Patios. And it basically celebrates those beautiful little Cordobese uh, patios, the interior courtyards and people's private homes. So you get a chance to go into people's private gardens. And I mean, the flora and the, the, the flora is amazing. The flowers, the trees, and then a lot of them are kind of built in the, in the um, old Moorish style. So the old Islamic style. So you have the little fountains and the water systems. Oh my God, I'm so excited if you can't tell. So that's personal. And it's also professionally too, because um, I am, I had planned an event around La Fiesta de los Patios for my community and for my clients in 2000, uh, in 2020, sorry. That of course got postponed to 2021. That of course now is getting postponed till 2022. So I need to do some networking and liaison, liaison there um, and, and just get some information. I mean, I've been to the festival many times, but I wanna find, I, I, I might, you know, I, I, yeah, I'm gonna get some content and I'm really, really excited about that. So um, that's kind of personal and professional, but on a larger scale for professionally, I would definitely say, for the day that we know when safe, when Spain can safely open up to the world again, when we're ready to welcome 
our global community back, our global travelers. Um, and, you know, when we're really ready as well, too, when it's safe for people to come into local communities here. So really excited for that because I can't wait for, I can't wait to show the world Spain again, of course. I can't wait to like get my business, you know, functioning at a at an operable level again, too. Awesome. Well, I'm excited for you to be able to travel because I just took my first trip during COVID and it's just I, you know, you forget how amazing it makes you feel. So I'm so excited for you to experience that. And I am also looking forward to Spain opening up and, and welcoming, welcoming, I can't even say it, welcoming, 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 there we go, welcoming us back. <laughs> um, and uh, I look forward to like just watching your business grow because I, I really um, love what you're doing. And I, I, I just, I admire the guts um, to be able to just put it all online and, and, and make it happen. So congratulations to you. Thank you. And thank you so much for having me on the podcast. I've loved connecting you with, uh, with you on Clubhouse. It's been, you know, it's, it's been great. That has been such a good platform for all of us in the industry who just want to meet and connect and, and chat about, you know, how our industry got bulldozed and what we're doing to rebuild it. <laughs> Well, I will definitely be seeing you on Clubhouse and we definitely will be following up with you soon to kind of just see what's going on. So thank you so much for coming on the show. Yeah, thank you so much, Aylin, for having me. I appreciate it. It's an honor. Thank you for joining the Travel Agent Podcast. Don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review. Visit the travelagentpodcast.com for more information about today's episode and other travel agent resources. Be sure to tune in every Thursday for new episodes. Until next time, continue to build a travel business you love.